Hello, HGTC students. Today, we're going to review how to log into your WaveNet account to access your courses in Desire to Learn, also known as D2L. First, you'll want to visit the HGTC homepage at www.hgtc.edu. Once on the HGTC homepage, click on the My WaveNet icon in the top right-hand corner of your screen. Once on the WaveNet login screen, you're going to want to enter your username and password in the username field and password field. If you have forgotten your password, please use the Forgot Password tool. When you have entered your information correctly, click the Login button right underneath the box. Once logged into your WaveNet account, you will see that you can access your courses in the D2L on the Home tab. On the right-hand side, you'll see a My Courses widget and you can simply click on the home icon to get into your courses. You can also access your courses on your My Student tab. In your My Student tab, you'll look for the box also that says My Courses on the left hand side. You can choose which term you're currently in and then click on the home icon for the class in which you want to enter. Once you click on the home icon, you'll be logged into your home page of D2L. Note that after clicking on the home icon, you will be in D2L, but you will still need to see the list of courses on the right-hand side underneath your courses widget and click on the title of the course you would like to enter. Once you have clicked on the title of the course you want to enter, you can easily change between courses in D2L by going to the top navigation yellow gold bar, click the downward arrow, and choose a different course. If you have any questions about D2L or accessing your courses, please call or contact the Student Information Center WaveNet Central on any of our three campus locations. So let's go ahead and navigate to a course that, you're, that you may be enrolled in. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the yellow navigation bar to click on the drop-down menu for select a course. Let's go ahead and click on a course. For the purposes of this training, Please do not uh, worry about the Hangout section down below or the Role Switch here. You will not have these two widgets. You'll see under the Home page for your course that you select in the drop-down menu, you have an Updates widget, a News widget, a Calendar widget, and a Bookmarks widget. Again, you do not have Role Switch or Hangout, so please ignore those two fields. In the Updates widget, you can get specific information about what your instructor has provided to you or assignments or quizzes that are available to you or emails that may be available to you that you have not read uh, yet. And so it's important to know that this Updates widget is helpful information to help you find information that you have not read yet that, that the instructor has added or that the instructor needs you to, to view immediately. Under the News widget, you can see that there's a welcome message from the instructor. You, depending on the needs of the course and the needs of your instructor, you may or may not use this News widget regularly. But please pay attention to both the Updates widgets and the News widgets regularly in case your instructor is trying to communicate to you. The Calendar widget is uh, available to help show you when current assignments are due or quizzes are due. And so this is an important tool that you can use. The bookmarks widget is something that you can use as well, and we'll talk about later in the presentation, where you could go through the content area or in Dropbox and bookmark something that you need to go back to. So this is the home page of your course. You can see that we've covered the yellow navigation bar, how to switch courses. We've also talked about the home page of your course. And you can see that in the home page of the course, you also have additional navigation tools at the top of the page. Course Home, which is where we are right now. A content, assignments, communications, and tools. If you click on Course Home, we'll stay on the same page that we currently are on. If we click on Content, we can go to the table of contents for which your instructor has prepared for you. In the table of contents, you'll see a variety of documents, assignments, 
or instructions that your professor has provided to you in order to complete the course successfully. If you have read through a certain area, you'll see a check mark. But that doesn't mean you can't come back to this welcome page and reread the items that are listed here. If you do not see a check mark on these items below, that means you have not read them yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at the syllabus. In order to view anything in the content area, click on the link of the item presented. And this will open up into a page where you can view the syllabus or, or document. You can also use these tools in the bottom left-hand corner to zoom in or to zoom out, depending on your preference for viewing the document. You can also choose to fit the document to the width of the page. You can use the arrows for going up to a previous page or going down to the next page. You can view this as text as well. And you can also choose to download this to your personal flash drive or your personal computer. If you would like to go to the next document in your table of contents, you can choose to use the next arrow up at the top of the page. You can also choose this icon to view your syllabus or other document in a new window. And this icon that looks like a bookmark is where you can tag your syllabus or other documents and bookmark it to your course homepage. You can see the bookmark was added successfully. We can click the X to close this dialog box. So we navigate back to the course home page. You can see now that we have a bookmark listed for our syllabus. If you have any questions about viewing the content in your D2L course, please come by and see the staff in the Student Information Center. So let's go to the next section, Assignments. If we click on the drop-down arrow next to the word Assignments, you'll see that there are a series of categories listed here, Discussions, Dropbox, Quizzes, and more. The three primary tools that you will use in assignments will be the first three, the discussions, Dropbox, and quizzes. Instructors may or may not use the remaining tools. So let's go to discussions. On the discussions list page, you'll see a series of questions that your instructor may ask you to answer. For example, this one says, do you like using and learning new technologies? Explain your experience using new technologies, D2L, iPads, Nooks, or other. In order to answer this question, click on the topic. As you can see, the question is still listed at the top of the page. In order to respond to this question, we'll need to click on the option that says Start a New Thread. At the top of the page, you'll see the cursor is blinking in what we would call a subject field. In the next section, you can click inside this text box and answer the question. Remember that this is the subject and this is where you would like to answer the question. As soon as you have completed your response, Scroll down to the bottom of the page and click Post. Oftentimes, instructors will require you to answer discussion board posts. Please remember to start a new thread for each question that you need to answer in order to receive the credit. Oftentimes, professors may require you to respond to one of your peers in the classroom and so, in order to do so, you'll need to click on someone's response to the question. So let's go ahead and click on Jennifer's. And Jennifer says, I like using learning new technologies because we can respond to hers by clicking reply to thread. 
I appreciate your insight because, and of course, once you complete your response to your peers post, you can go ahead and click post. So that is how you reply to your, your peers. You can see that we have a bread trail at the top of the page and we can click on discussions list to get back to the home page for discussions. You'll see there are a total of two threads that have been created and four posts. If you would like to go back into that topic to see what has been discussed, simply click on the topic. And there are a total of two posts and two replies to this one post. If you have any questions about using the discussion board, please come by and see your Student Information Center staff. Now that we've talked about discussions, let's go to Dropbox. Dropbox is the tool that you'll use to submit your homework. Oftentimes, your professor may or may not include a series of directions for you to do so in the table of contents using the content tool or in the assignment Dropbox folder. So let's click on Assignment 1. Over here where it says Assignment 1, you may have additional assignment instructions listed. Remember that in order to submit your file, you're going to need to search for that file first by clicking Add a File here. On the left hand side, you can choose to add a file from your personal computer from your locker in D2L, which we'll talk about more later, or a group locker that you may share with your peers in D2L. From your personal computer, this is the easiest way to access your flash drive or any files on your personal computer. Go ahead and click Upload. If you need to go to the flash drive that you have on your computer, you'll want to navigate to the computer section and click on your flash drive here. For the purposes of this training, we're going to go to the document section and we're going to go ahead and click on a document that we have available. And then we're going to click add. You'll see that the, doc the document is now available, the source that came from your computer, and you're ready to submit your homework. Please pay close attention to the start date and the due date for each assignment. After you click Submit, you can go back to the Submissions column and take a look at your submission for a second time, just to double check and make sure that you submitted everything correctly. Click on the number and you can see uh, all of the documents that you have clicked and added and submitted for this particular homework assignment. Go ahead and click on it to double check your submission history. So let's go ahead and go back to our folder list. So we know how to submit assignments by going into the assignment folder. We also know how to check our submission history. Again, please pay close attention to the due date for each assignment. Let's go to the quizzes section. The quizzes section is an, a section that will provide you an opportunity to take quizzes and uh, respond to uh, syllabus quizzes or uh, textbook quizzes that your professor has provided. On occasion, your professor may require you to go to the testing center before taking your quiz. So please keep that in mind before you go to the quiz section. Make sure that you verify through the syllabus or with your professor if you are able to take this quiz at home or do you have to schedule it in the testing center. So let's go ahead and click on a quiz, textbook chapter one quiz. This is a quiz that will tell you the current time of the day that it was that it is right now. It will verify your name, it will verify the, the begin period, and it will let you know if there is a limited amount of time that you can complete the quiz. When your instructor makes the quiz available, you're going to see a Start Quiz button in the upper right-hand corner. We have, dis we have discussed Discussions, Dropbox, and Quizzes under the Assignments tool. 
If you have any questions at all about using these three tools, please come by and see us in the Student Information Center. Now we can go to the Communications tool. This also has a drop-down menu. In the Communications tool, depending on your professor's needs, they may or may not use the email, news, or chat. So let's go ahead and take a look at email. Please note that you have two email accounts, your first email account and your, the most important email account that you have at the college is your WaveNet email. That is a separate email account that you can only access by logging into your WaveNet account. Your D2L email is also available to you. Please make sure that you communicate with your instructor to see which, best, uh, which method would be the best way to get in communication with, with him or her. They may require you to use WaveNet. They may require you to use D2L. Yeah, as you can see here, we have one email in our inbox that we have not read. We also have an email in our drafts folder and two emails for an English 101 course folder. So let's go ahead and take a look at the inbox. In order to read an email, go ahead and click on the subject of that email. And that email will open up in a message preview window at the bottom of the page. You can scroll down that page to see the message. In order to make sure that this email gets marked as read, go ahead and click the More Actions and click Mark Read. It will change the bold email to be unbold, which signifies that you've read that email. You may also move this email to a course folder if you find that you want to file it away for a particular course, and it will move it for you. If you'd like to create a new folder for a new course, you can click on Folder Management, click New Folder, and make a title for that course. And click Save. Now there's a new folder where we can save emails. Using the bread, breadcrumb trail at the top, Click on Message List to get back to our inbox. In order to compose a new email, click the Compose button at the top of the page. This will open in a new window where you can type an email address and a subject, type your email message, and then click Send at the top of the page. I will show you later in the presentation a much more efficient and easier way to send email rather than using and sending email through here. You can always come back to the communications tool and check your email here, but I will show you an easier way to send email in a few minutes. We also can reply to an email by clicking on the message that we have in our inbox and click the reply button in the message preview window. This will open up a new email where it has the email address, the subject, and you can type your email here. Once you're ready, you can click send to send that message. If you have any questions about using the email tool in the communications area, please come by the Student Information Center. The next two tools are news and chat. These two tools may or may not be used by your instructor or your professor. We will not cover them in the session today. So the last section we're going to cover today is the tools section. You click the drop down menu, you'll notice that there are several things listed here. The attendance and grades tools are view only. So if you'd like to view your attendance for the class, your professor will post that attendance here. Depending on the professor's needs, he or she may or may not use the attendance tool. The grades tool is very similar. Your professor may or may not use the grades tool. If they do, this is a view-only screen where you can view your current status of your grade in this course. Under tools, we also have the class list. The class list tool is a great option for sending email to students, 
or to your instructor. Simply check the name next to the person you would like to send an email to and click the email icon at the top of the page. This will open in a new window so that you have the email address automatically entered into the to field. You can type your subject In the message body window, you can type your email. And when you're ready to send, go ahead and click send. It'll give you an icon that says that it was sent successfully. That's the easiest way to email anybody in your class, including your instructor. Also under the tools, you can check your calendar. This is a great tool that your professor may use to let you know about due dates as well as quizzes that have been made available and other information as well. You can use the calendar tool to add events for yourself. So if you would like to create an event for planning study time, you can do that. We're going to study on Friday the 16th from 12.30 until 2.30. So we can edit the day and the time at the bottom of the page as soon as you have entered your content and click Create. Now if we travel over here on the calendar tool and click on Friday the 16th, we'll see that we have scheduled ourselves some study time for Math 101. So not only can your professor or instructor can use this tool to help you know when due dates are coming up, you can use this tool yourself to schedule your own events or times to complete assignments. You can also view the, agenda, the, the calendar in a different format by using the tools at the top of the page. If you like to view by month, you can choose to view by month. If you like to view by list, you can choose to view it by list, and so on and so forth. There are many different ways for you to view the calendar. In order to travel to a different day, simply click the calendar tool on the right hand side and choose the day. Also under tools, we have a checklist, frequently asked questions, and glossary. These three tools are infrequently used. They may or may not be used by your professor. If you have any questions about using these three tools, please come and see us in the Student Information Center. The last tool I'm going to share with you today is the Locker tool. This is a really neat tool that you can use sort of like a virtual flash drive. So under Tools, let's click Locker. You can create a variety of folders such as I have done here by clicking New Folder for each course that you have. And click Create. This way, any time that you work on a library computer or another computer on campus, if you forget your flash drive, you can use the locker as a place for it to store your work. So let's say we have typed up a lab report for a Bio 101 course, and this is where we need to upload it to. We've worked on the library computers, and we can come here to click Upload Files, click Upload, and search on your computer for that particular file that you would want to save, and click Save. Now we can click Return to Parent Folder if we would like to do the same thing for any of our other courses listed. Let's say we need to go back to our folder or at home and we want to download the work that we've worked on so that we can continue completing the assignment. So all you need to do is come back to your locker, click on the course folder, and click on the document that you uploaded earlier that day and it's going to ask you to open it or download it. You can click it and download it, or you can check the box next to the document and click download on the screen and download it to your computer. 
Remember to upload the new document once you have that finished. And under our breadcrumb trail, we're going to go ahead and click on My Locker to get back to where we started. And again, if you have any questions about using the locker as your virtual flash drive, please come by and see us in the Student Information Center. Now, let's say we are done using D2L for today. The last thing that we need to do when we're using D2L is to remember to log out. So definitely, as a student, please remember to come up to the uh, home page or in your course home page and remember to log out of your D2L account. This ensures that no other student has access to the work that you've completed and the progress that you have completed. Please remember to also do the same thing for your WaveNet account. Once you're done using WaveNet, please remember to log out. Thank you so much for attending our D2L webinar today. And again, if you have any questions, you know where to come. Visit us in the Student Information Center, live chat with us online, visit us on Facebook, or call us if you have any questions. Thank you for attending and have a wonderful day.